Let's put maybe 110 bar 11 kV transformer, 25 MVR transformer. Transformer winding connection is delta star solidly grounded. Assuming, assuming single line to ground fault in bus two, the single line to ground fault current and three phase fault current at bus two remains same. What's the reflected fault current on the transformer HV? Whether the reflected fault current on the transformer HV remains same or is there any difference? It's not same. If it is not same, if it is not same, what's the value? If it's not the same, assuming that like single line to ground fault current and three phase fault current at bus two is same. In general, it will not be same for your kind of information. Single line to ground fault current may be slightly higher than the three phase fault current if the winding configuration is delta star. But there is some, there might be a possibility that, I mean, for say this current could be, this current could be, uh, I mean, for say same. If the impedance of the zero sequence impedance of the transformer is more, let's freeze that first. Then probably let's try to do some more exercise which is later. Let's come here. Let's create a fault. Let's create a fault. Let me create a fault first here. Let's look at what's the three phase fault current. Transformer impedance I have been given. That's a mistake. Let's do the transformer impedance. All right, it's given. Clear now. I mean, what say three phase fault current is 14.123 kilams. Three phase fault current is 14.123 kilams. That is reflected as 1.412 kilams on the HV. Obvious, the voltage is 110 bar 11 kV. When the voltage is 10 is to 1, the current will be 1 is to 10. So, obvious. So current of 14.123 kilams when there is a fault on the LV is reflected as 1.412 kilams on the HV. Now question is, if there is a single line to ground fault, like we need to look at what is the fault current. Yes, like I am running 61363 and probably you can run 60909. Like the same fault current 14.123 for a three phase fault. 14.123 for a three phase fault and it is reflected as 1.412 1.412 on the HV. Let's plot the single line to ground fault. Let's plot the single line to ground fault. Single line to ground fault is not single line to ground fault is not 14.123. It is 14.291. It is slightly higher than 14.123. Let me let me discuss it again, this point first. Let, let's make this first point clear. Three phase fault current is 14.123. Single line to ground fault current is higher, 14.123. Just, just make a note of this number. 14.123 has increased from 14.123 to 14.291. Question is why? Why it has increased from 14.123 to 14.291? Why this 14.123 in the three phase fault? And why this? Let me open an Excel sheet as well. So, three phase fault current and SLG it is 14.123 kilams. Here it is 14.298, if I remember correctly. Let's look at 291. Sorry for that. Question why it is SLG is higher than three phase fault current and beauty is and beauty is if we probably create maybe a star grounded star grounded transformers and let's create a fault let's create a fault and then let's compare the fault current single line to ground fault current and three phase fault current are equal in star grounded star grounded transformer 
but that's not equal in delta star grounded transformer. Why? At least if the question is clear, star grounded, star grounded transformer, three phase fault current is equal to single line to ground fault current, whereas delta star grounded transformer, single line to ground fault current is higher than three phase fault current. All right, so this what we have plotted is single line to ground fault. And if you want to plot three phase fault, I'm just plotting three phase fault. Three phase fault is 14.123 delta star or star star. And single line to ground fault is 14.123 here, but it is 14.291. If you want to understand the difference, why it is, you need not really worry much. What you need to do, you probably has to visit our website and go to the go to the blocks and like we have written beautiful three articles beautifully three articles on the same topic how to manually calculate as well right short circuit calculations for symmetrical and unsymmetrical faults, right? Short circuit current calculation for symmetrical and unsymmetrical faults. This is an article which you should not really miss. This talks both single line to ground fault as well as as well as three phase fault using e tab as well as the manual calculations. What is the grid short circuit? What is the percentage impedance? What is the percentage R? What is the percentage X? What's how it is matching with ETAP? What about the transformers? And like, what's the total impedance? How to calculate the total impedance? What is R per unit? What is X per unit? And validating the results with an ETAP. And how to connect the zero sequence? How to connect the zero sequence? And if the fault is three phase fault, how it is to be calculated? If it is a single line to ground fault, how it is to be calculated? And if it is a different, different windings, Different different windings, how the single line to ground fault varies. It is just not just not single line to ground fault, it is line to line fault, line to line to ground fault, all those things, including the cable impedance, including the contribution from the motors, all this stuff has been explained. So don't miss this. Don't miss this blocks. And it's probably a bit lengthy block. And of course, if you have to learn power system in depth, you need to go through some some uh, this lengthy lengthy blocks and understand it and you try it in manual calculation on your own if you want to learn right and a nutshell what i want to convey uh, like this is probably single line to ground fault this is also single line to ground fault and the fault current for a single line to ground fault will change and if you want to have single line to ground fault same as the three phase fault current that's pretty much possible when the zero sequence impedance of the transformer is high. Let me ask maybe an other interesting question then. What's the zero sequence impedance of the transformer with respect to positive sequence impedance of the transformer? What's the relationship between positive sequence impedance of the transformer and zero sequence impedance of the transformer? How much percentage for a two winding delta star transformer as far as IEC 60076 is concerned? Let me repeat my question. What's the relationship between what's the relationship between positive sequence impedance and zero sequence impedance of delta star grounded two winding transformer? Right? Almost we got the same answer. What I have done, I have increased the zero sequence impedance. IEC 60076 talks about this impedance. Zero sequence impedance is 90 to 110 percentage of positive sequence. Let me repeat. Zero sequence is 90 to 110 percentage of the positive sequence impedance if the transformer is two winding and if it is delta star. All right, now let's come back to this question like we have matched almost the three phase fault current and single line to ground fault current. And then probably try to find out what's the reflected fault current. 
when there is a single line to ground fault on the lv side that's do you think that that will reflect as only a zero current on the hv when there is a single line to ground fault and 14.13 kilohms is flowing on the lv do you think that there will not be any current on the hv do you believe this results certainly when there is a single line to ground fault current there should be some current which is supposed to flow on the transformer hv winding right then next question what we need to ask when we have plotted single line to ground fault what current you have plotted that's an important question to ask whether you have plotted zero sequence or positive negative zero sequence or or y p which is abc values so when the fault is a single line to ground fault when i am plotting abc values or phase faulty phase current is 14 kilohms and other two phases current is zero whereas if you look at that's reflected as like line to line fault on the transformer hv single line to ground fault on the lv is reflected as line to line fault on the hv if the transformer is delta star grounded a quick change let's create the same single line to ground fault on star grounded star grounded transformer single line to ground fault is reflected as a single line to ground fault itself the take away single line to ground fault on the lv side of star grounded star grounded transformer will reflect as a single line to ground fault on the transformer hv whereas single line to ground fault on the lv side of a delta star transformer will reflect as line to line fault on the hv single line to ground fault on star star transformer lv side will reflect as this single line to ground fault on the transformer hv whereas if transformer is delta star single line to ground fault on the lv will reflect as a line to line fault on the hv let's move on and probably of course some basics is needed and if you are not able to understand my classes that's absolutely fine you can go back to our youtube channel like we have quite a lot of content and you may not be able to understand it is first time you have to appreciate that fact what i am talking may not be some basics maybe it's slightly above the basics and probably by means of continuous effort consistent effort just read our blogs read up, i mean watch our youtube channels you will be able to maybe better understand next time all right fine so let's let's move on now like this conveys like two important messages when the single line to ground fault is reflected as a line to line fault on the hv and the zero sequence is not flowing on the transformer hv earth fault relay on the hv side do not have the capability to detect the fault on the lv earth fault relay is provided on the hv side do not have the capability to detect the earth fault on the lv side because the zero sequence is not reflected only protection what it's needed is overcurrent protection this will be detected as a line to line fault and it is detected by 51 not by 51n or 50n that's an important message which we have to probably probably we have to make a note of all right let's move on and i mean for say in order to find out the short circuit calculations manual watch this blog and in order to get more answers why the transformer hv winding overcurrent relay and earth fault relay detects only small quantum or i mean for say percentage of the transformer winding not the 100 percentage winding and why only 51 is capable of i mean for say detecting the fault in entire transformer not the 50 and if it is resistance grounded systems how much percentage of the winding is covered on the transformer hv by 50 all these questions or pretty much answered in our youtube channel and i guess like the place where you have to start is might be like ask selva 007 789 and i guess like 10 11 we have discussed in detail detail about it you can you can pretty much watch let's take let's extend the system a bit right with our own knowledge right 
let's move forget about that system let's take about the system and probably pretty much let's continue the system it's 110 bar 11 kv transformer and assume that like assume that 11 kv it is an industry which receives a power supply from 110 kv grid and step down to 11 kv and you have maybe cables and then maybe motors let me ask maybe few more questions but before that let me probably try to complete to an extent a model also all right one feeder we have completed and let's take the same copy paste option of this and then connect a transformer right maybe 2.5 mba transformer connected at lv side all right we are done let's take maybe one capacitor bank also Yeah, alternatively, we can have some other switch gears. This power might be going to some other switch gears also. There is a probability. So, right, this is another switch gear, probably in another area, which we can, right. Like I'm, I'm trying to add like all, all possible categories. And then probably a positive banks too. Yeah. all right i guess like almost what are the different possible configurations which can come in a medium voltage i have added we have a motor we have a transformer we have a, which is going to another switch gear we have a capacitor bank maybe motors with a variable frequency drive or something which we can add apart from that all right one last which we can add generator let's add that also Right. CT relay and a circuit breaker. All right. To an extent, we are done. Almost all the varieties which is possible we have covered. I guess like this is pretty much what we can have a different varieties. And let's ask an next question. No. Having completed this. Let's ask the next question. What are the protections to be added in the system? We have a capacitor. We have a motor. We have a transformer. We have a feeder. We haven't added a bus coupler, but like, let's add a bus coupler also. We have a generator. We have an incomer. And if you want, you can have a variable frequency drive. And probably if bus coupler is missing, if you felt like that, we can very well add a bus coupler, which might be permanently closed or might be open, etc., etc. All right, let's bring that. All right, so this is pretty much uh, like systems with the two transformers, right? And probably here I can very well add the bus coupler. We brought the bus coupler also in, right? So which means the system has like whatever the things which we have written, we have written. Now let's ask a question. Uh, let's take like what are quite frequently used. So motor, let's look, discuss today. Transformer, let's discuss. Feeder, bus coupler. Incomer also we'll discuss. To an extent, generator, if time permits, we will discuss. 
let's ask what are the protection functions which we need to have for the speeders what are the protection functions which we need to have for the speeders overcurrent and earth fault what are the protections which we will be giving putting it in ansi number shall we have some ansi number 51 50 51 n 50 n so these are all these are all probably the protection functions which need to be enabled for a transformer 51 50 51 is id empty over current id empty over current instant sorry inverse definite minimum time over current transformer inverse definite minimum time over current 50 instantaneous over current instantaneous over current and 51 n idmt earth fault 50 n instantaneous earth fault so this is all the protections which has to be enabled for transformers bus couplers to an extent feeder motor may need an additional 49 that's thermal overload it might need maybe 46 negative sequence and so forth but like let's not really focus much let's ask maybe one important question maybe for an incomer we may need to enable 67 and 67 yen when the incomer needs a 67 and 67 yen and when the incomer do not need 67 any thoughts when i say incomer that's an incomer which is coming from a transformer which i am talking about when this incomer needs when the incomer needs 67 n and 67 when incomer do not need 67 any answers yeah when you have multiple incomers operating in parallel when you have multiple incomers operating in parallel then you need a directional if not you don't need a directional what's it mean if the bus coupler is closed and cb6 cb13 and cb12 all the three breakers are closed in a normal operating condition then you essentially need 67 and 67n and if you do not close all the three breakers together if you are following two out of three logic which means bus coupler is normally kept open and this transformer is feeding this load and this transformer is feeding this load and bus coupler is kept open normally in case if one transformer fails the other transformer takes care of the complete load by means of closing the bus coupler of course after opening the incomer then you may need to uh, means for say me you may not need to worry about the directional protection all the three breakers are closed in a normal operating condition you need a directional for the incomer if it is a two out of three scheme bus coupler is kept open you don't really need to have 67 or 67 yen hope that's clear if that's clear just put cc in chat if you need more than one incomer and operates in parallel you need a directional if not answer is no i guess there is a book Uh, like very very basic book which i generally not recommend for the advanced participants but for the beginners if you are starting from the scratch i mean so say the book what i generally recommend is uh, host and protection by yg paitanger and whatever i am talking probably maybe explained in much more simple language in the book which you can probably i mean so say buy it if you are in india or probably if you are outside india you can google it some pdf document you will get it Custom protection by YG by Tanker. So let me probably try. YG custom protection by YG. I guess like you will get. You supposed to get in video and probably means to say it's probably cheaper. If you want, you can buy it in India. by means of ordering it in amazon i am not really a promoter of it if you want you can you can it's only kindle edition okay in fact paper book is much cheaper than that in i guess like you can buy it in some stores 
or probably i guess like you will get the pdf document in a casual casual google search you will be able to get the pdf of this that's great to have here kastu uh, paitangar has that and probably means so if somebody wants this like i can probably put it further benefit in the chat like i will not really recommend this book for advanced post on production it's base level theory if you do not know like you can you can start and advanced level obviously first level you can start with this npag that right that probably you can this is pretty much you can you can download it fine good let's move on coming back here like we have listed out the protections and probably the postum protection by yg paitanga to talks about like what equipments what protections need to be given at very very base level and if you are a beginner strongly recommended you can you can go through and if you are advanced level you can go with npag or probably means we'll see whatever may be the next level materials what you have all right let's move on now let's ask a question what is wrong with binding connection of this transformer or any comments on binding configuration of this transformer all right so coming back even if you going for a resistance grounded systems that resistance grounded system might be okay and if we are limiting the fault current to 400 amps or 300 amps that might be okay if you have only motors but that may not be okay when you have a generator yes. when you have a generator the winding configuration probably can be changed to star grounded on the 110 kv and delta on the 11 kv but that also has some issues when the generator is off your bus to 11 kv system becomes ungrounded system and to avoid that you may go for an earthing transformer or alternatively you can go for unit ratio transformer for this generator which mean though this generator is also 11 kv just to ensure like unbalanced single line to ground fault etc etc issues though that is an expensive but technically an ideal solution you can go with delta on the generator side and star and of course the star has to be a resistance grounded system that's because you have a motor right cool so these are all probably the things what we need to look at and then probably we have to start probably providing the protection for this 51 50 51n 50n etc etc how to give a setting is like most really important and probably in order to have maybe a better clarity let me probably bring up a quick syllabus right that gives you an idea like how to approach step by step how to approach a step by step on okay i guess like this is kind of uh, probably bit old syllabus but anyway the topics are uh, quite relevant and probably forget about this time if you want i can i can delete it and probably this one and just bringing this to explain you how to do the relay coordination the first and primary step of relay coordination is performing load flow to find out what's the maximum load current which it flows through and this might be really needed for an interconnected system for radial systems probably if it is a 2.5 mva transformer 11 kv you need not really perform load flow you know the load current of the transformer and the hv side is 131 amps and you will pretty much go with the relay coordination based on the rated current most of the times rather than going with an actual current right so you will go with this but if the system is interconnected you may not know what's the current which is flowing so you may need to perform load flow to find out the load current and above which you need to set the relay settings and you need to find out the short circuit you need to perform a short circuit studies to find out the maximum short circuit current you mean to find out the minimum short circuit current 
you need to ensure that the relay is coordinated from full load current to the short circuit current maximum short circuit current and the relays are properly coordinated you essentially need a short circuit and you need to check the sensitivity of the relays at the minimum short circuit currents you need to perform a short circuit you need to perform motor acceleration studies to find out what is the starting characteristics of the motor if it is a delta star the starting characteristics is already defined but if it's the soft starter or variable frequency drive the starting characteristics is decided by what is the setting parameter which you are giving in order to understand the starting characteristics you need to perform a motor starting study and probably you have to take the motor starting characteristics from the motor starting study and then probably you may need to do transient stability to find out the critical clearing time you need to ensure that the relay clears the fault well within the critical clearing time you need to ensure that the faults are cleared well within the critical clearing time so that the system is stable what i mean by that probably here like you can have maybe multiple other feeders what i mean by that just to give an idea you may you may have a system something like this and probably means for say if you start from the bottom you will be like means for say working out this relay first that will be coordinated with the downstream maybe discriminated for 200 milliseconds then this to this additional 200 milliseconds that is this operates at 400 milliseconds then this operates at 600 milliseconds which means like if there is a fault in the cable 3 the circuit breaker 3 isolates a fault in 400 milliseconds or so something like that but if there is a fault in this cable probably this generator may go out of step with respect to the grid well within maybe 150 milliseconds if you go by the discrimination minimum discrimination what you need i mean for say much before your relay clears the fault the generator trips in pole slipping or probably this generator go out of step right so essentially you need to perform a transient stability to find out the critical clearing time and production coordination has to ensure that the fault is cleared well within critical clearing time you need to perform harmonic analysis to check what's the harmonics you need to check harmonics so that like you can look at what's the total harmonic distortions individual harmonic distortions what's the impact of the harmonics on the relay coordinations etc after doing all these things probably you need to perform the relay coordination after doing the relay coordination if r plus is mandatory you need to perform an r plus studies and you need to check whether the incident energy is within the limit or not if it not then probably you have to rethink about this relay settings and coordination so when we say relay coordination probably you need to look at all these topics load flow short circuit motor starting transient harmonics then probably performing a relay coordination once you have done with the relay coordination with that values you can find out the r plus incident energy and stuffs and you can come back and probably i mean so revise the settings in case if the incident energy exceeds the limit or something like that maybe some overview it, it definitely means so say you cannot really get all the points what i have told in the first attempt it is it's okay it's okay at least some overview better than what you have previously right all right so with that probably i mean what to say let's look at i mean what to say what are the things which you need to do you need to definitely do a short circuit study like means to say you can skip all other studies maybe to perform a relay coordination maybe taking an assumptions that these etc etc but if you want a precise relay coordination you need to do all the studies but like short circuit you cannot you can never ever skip it you can never ever skip it so short circuit study is mandatory for that and of course we need to understand why do we need a protections and like if you are doing a protection for a low voltage systems you may not have overcurrent and earth fault 5150 51n 50n instead you might be having miniature circuit breaker molded case circuit breakers air circuit breakers etc and that probably has some trip units and how to coordinate that is another other probably an important sense and circuit breaker terminologies like ultimate breaking withstand service breaking peak right modeling of lsig 
right? And medium voltage, like it's a big task, means for say, need a overcurrent and earth fault, how to set the overcurrent and earth fault, like for a different equipments. And probably means for say, nowadays, if you take some relays, relays has multiple stages and multiple groups. We are not really understanding the potential of the numerical relays and calling the relays as a relays is not really right, at least with respect to now. The relays become intelligent and the OEM started calling them as IEDs, intelligent electronic devices. So the devices are truly intelligent. The devices are truly intelligent and you have multiple groups which is possible, which means this fault current, when there is fault in the cable, might be different when the grid is also available, when the generator is also available. That fault current will be different only when the grid is available and the fault current will be different when the grid is not available and only the generator is available. I have three possible scenarios where I can operate my system. This industry, assume it is an industry, this industry run its co-generation along with the grid. There is a possibility. In case of a grid failure, they will run the system with the cogeneration only. That is the second operation mode. Third operation mode, in case like if the cogeneration is taken out for a maintenance or something, you will get the power supply from the grid and you will be running. So the fault current may vary from 3 kilohms to maybe 30 kilohms. And you may not have the proper protection coordination settings for all this, all this complete range of, complete range of, uh, I mean, so to say, short circuit currents. So you may need a different setting when both grid and generator is available. You may need a different setting only when generator is available. You may need a different setting only when the grid is available. And you can probably put it in three different groups and automatically this changes its group. Right. Automatically it changes its group, depends upon the digital inputs what this relay receives. Similarly, like we always look at only 50, 150 as a two stages, but literally the relay have like three stages or four stages. Overcurrent one, here you are seeing like the stage one with the definite time, inverse characteristics, etc. Second stage could be instantaneous or a short time. If it is a short time, you will be having again like a different inverse curves which you can add. And probably you can go with now OC2. And if you enable this, like you will be having again stage three, which could be an instantaneous or whatever it is. So you need to ensure that what's the relay which you have and like how many options which you have, what are the criticalities which you have? Do you need a different settings for a different configurations? All those things probably you need to aware. Right. And how this automatically change the group? You have to probably configure it. You have to get probably the breaker status and you have to create some logics and you have to pass that information to the relay relay. It will take an action only when probably it is programmed to do what it has to do. Of course, it is not means what say intelligent in itself. We have to make that relay intelligent by means of external building logics. Right. So that's pretty much what we need to do. Right. You need to work out stage one, stage two, stage three, group one, group two settings and multiple group settings also that's applicable for, for both phase faults and depth faults. And that could be for motor feeders and motor like it's a thermal overlay relay also. That's what, forget about the dates. That's a course which we have done long back, right? Similarly for a motors, incomers, bus couplers, why do we need a standby earth fault? It's an obvious question. I guess like I have answered, but not be directly. If there is a single line to ground fault, means for say 50 or 51 or 51N or 51N, none of the relays provided in the high voltage side will going to give a backup to this. Maybe 51 probably gives a backup, but if it is a resistance after the system, then it may not be also giving a backup. So obvious it becomes mandatory that you have to go with a standby earth fault, which is 51G also might be restricted earth fault or EF. Right. So importance of uh, standby earth fault. Right. And like, why do we need a sensitive earth fault, especially when high resistance grounded systems and directional overcurrent earth fault? Why do we need a directional? Where do we need a directional and how to set it? Right. 
and how to do it in a real time this is pretty much what what our course syllabus of it and probably i guess like that gives like a nice overview of what it is and probably let me pick it up maybe one quick system which we have taken and we have talked about so this is one of the system in qatar right it has like a bus 22 kv and probably means was it has four outgoing feeders bus cover closed it is feeding another one and probably it has like four rmus four rmus four rmus etc and probably if you start coordinating like you will be having quite lot of challenges like so many relays what's the fault clearing time etc etc so like when you are coordinating start at the base level without even generators and other criticality such as you need to know how to coordinate for radial systems how to coordinate for closed rings how to coordinate for parallel incomer feeders and like what is normalized curve when you have like multiple inverse uh, multiple incomers what is a normalized curve all these things probably pretty much what you need to know and learn right uh, wish you good luck and we will meet again probably in the upcoming weeks thank you all have a great day